More than a thousand children, most of them girls, are locked in mental health units, many run by private companies under regimes that are not always specialist. I was subjected to very, very brutal restraints. With staff who can struggle to keep them safe. We all believed that one young person was going to die there. And often miles from home and family. If something did happen, you would never get there in time. These companies, they are being run to maximise profit. The NHS spends hundreds of millions of pounds buying care from private providers. But are they putting profit before patients. When I'm stressed and when I've used to run away, my mum would always say, Natasha is on the swings. And I'd always go find a swing and I'd just go and sit on it. That's all I needed, was just something to calm me down. Natasha is rebuilding her life after a lost decade. Two, three. <laughs> a walk in the park with her partner, Amy, is the sort of simple pleasure she was denied when she was confined to mental health units with problems including anorexia and escalating self-harm that began when she was 12. Newtown, Signet, Cromwell House, Signet, Bradford. She spent 10 years in mental health units dotted across the country and reached her lowest point after being transferred to a privately run hospital in Maidenhead. When I got there, um, my self-harming instead of decreasing, increased to probably the worst amounts of self-harm that I'd ever done in my life. Um, to the point where on one occasion I had to have over 200 stitches. I was left unattended. I'd hidden a load of razors which were supposed to be taken off of me on, like, like on my return to the hospital, um, but they weren't. And I managed to cut myself probably about 36 times, probably more. Um, um, and I hit arteries and stuff like that. She says physical restraint was common. I was subjected to very, very brutal restraints. Um, some that stick in my mind to this day. They'd pin you up against walls, smack your head off the wall. They'd drag you across floors. They'd wrap you around door frames. You'd have people pretty much sat on your head, sat on your legs. And these would be like big, big men, not just, not just women. Natasha really sued the hospital, run by private company, the Huntercombe Group, and was awarded significant damages for their failure to provide appropriate psychiatric treatment and for allowing episodes of self-harm. The Huntercombe Group told us they apologize for her care. Natasha says her compensation was a fraction of the amount the NHS paid to subcontract her care to private hospitals. My commissioner was of a lovely woman. She referred to me as a million dollar baby because they made millions out of the NHS for my care. Natasha is not alone. There are 1,282 under-18s admitted to inpatient units across England. 927 of them are girls. These units are specially commissioned Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, or CAMS. They're paid for by NHS England, but often privately run. Private providers were paid £156.5 million by NHS England for beds or specialist care in 2017-18. That's 44% of the total CAMS specialist budget. Keir Harding is an occupational therapist who works as a consultant to NHS organisations and private companies. The things that jump out at me from what the Care Quality Commission say about private providers in this area is that a private placement will last twice as long as an NHS placement. So there is concern from the CQC that some of the places that market themselves as specialist units are actually just locked rehab units where people are warehoused rather than there being an intense effort to make changes in their lives. In their promotional videos, private providers promise the highest standards of care. We aspire to nurture the world one person at a time. But Sky News analysis shows that they are less likely than their NHS equivalents to be rated highly. We looked at Care Quality Commission inspection reports for hospitals run by the five largest private recipients of NHS funding, compiled since 2016. 
88% of those run by NHS Trust were rated as good or outstanding, compared to just 58% of those run by the largest private providers. No private unit had an overall rating of outstanding, five were rated inadequate, the lowest grade the CQC can give, and since 2017, five privately run units have closed following critical CQC reports. One of those inadequate hospitals was here, Watcom Hall in Torquay, owned and run by the Huntercombe Group. It's one of four mental health hospitals the company has closed in the last year, as its parent company faces financial difficulties that last month saw it go into administration. A Sky News investigation has uncovered concerns about the standard of care provided here and at another of its units in Devon. In May 2017, inspectors from the Care Quality Commission came here and they delivered a damning verdict. They found multiple failures of patient care and concluded that Whatcom Hall was not safe for patients. The Huntercombe Group were given six months to improve the service but instead decided to close this hospital. Now Sky News understands that what went on here is the subject of a police investigation. The investigation is understood to relate to a former employee and the Crown Prosecution Service say they're awaiting a full case file from the police. After Whatcom Hall closed, the Huntercombe Group opened a new unit a few miles away called Meadow Lodge. Last month it also closed, with the Huntercombe Group blaming a lack of demand. But former employees have told us the unit was unsafe and short-staffed. Ian Summers is an experienced mental health nurse who's worked with the highest security patients at Broadmoor Hospital. He says Meadow Lodge had a culture of self-harm among adolescent girls, including the use of ligatures, a means of strangulation. I've got a young person banging their head against a wall, I've got another person cutting and I've got another person with a ligature. Now I don't have all the staff to respond to all these young people. So I have to, I have to risk assess and respond to the one in, in you know, it's not close to the death, really, because we all believed that one young person was going to die there. And we responded to the ligature first, then the cutting, then the head banging. And I imagine all these young people being left in this crisis. It's just not right. We didn't have enough staff, we didn't have enough trained staff, and we had nothing for these young people. That's why they were restrained, because there was nothing for them. Ian says he was sacked after raising concerns that staff were being encouraged to downplay incidents that should have been reported. Colleague Chris Tremlett, a healthcare assistant at Meadow Lodge, resigned after seeing some of the treatment. Ligatures were happening daily, um, continually daily. Um, same with restraints were happening daily. It was just too much. We didn't have the staff to cope with the amount that was going on there. Personally for myself, it was upsetting to see, you know, these are children at the end of the day. Um, nobody wants to be physically holding a child. You know, it shouldn't be happening in my eyes, but we had to do what we were told to do. Mental health units may be closing, but there is no shortage of patients and parents requiring support. One measure of demand is the number of children who end up being treated far from home and families. It is a particular problem here in the South West, where we went to see a support group of parents who have first-hand experience. Hello. Nice Hi. to see you. How are you doing? John, how are you? Pleased to meet you. Are we through here? Yes, yes we are. Lovely. Sorry. These parents all have daughters in crisis, and they meet once a month to share their experiences. We think her self-harm is worse than when she was when she was 13. Oh, yeah. 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 John and Vicky's daughter has been treated in ten different mental health units in the last five years, eight of them privately run. We've missed our daughter growing up for the last five, six years. But when you see her now, even though she's 18 years old now, and in, in, the, in the adult services, but sometimes when she's talking, she's still that 13-year-old girl who left you over. You wake up every morning and you think, is this going to be... Well, first of all, you think, is she still alive? And then when you find out everything's all right, or as it, as it can be, your next thought is, will she manage to achieve her aim today? And you are hundreds of miles away from her, and if something did happen, you would never get there in time. David Marianne's daughter is more than three hours drive away and they believe the use of private hospitals is failing children. These companies, they're... They're, they're in it for the money. They're a profit maker, they're beholden to their shareholders and so they, they are being run to maximise profit. 
So that's where you have the constant staff shortages. Well, we didn't have enough staff for that, we didn't have enough staff. This incident happened, well, where was the staff? Well, we didn't have enough. Well, the money you're being given, paid for this, that's not an excuse. Never an excuse for the amount of money that's been put into this. It's, it's almost a license to print money. Keir Harding believes the current system has to change. What is it that means that the NHS feel the need to send people away? Um, because it's not like providers exist in a vacuum. They're responding to a market that's there. Um, and then we can kind of think, well, why are these placements lasting so long? Is it because private providers want to gouge money out of people? And that's a really easy accusation to make. But again, we also need to think about, well, why aren't NHS organisations trying to get people home harder? The Hunter Goon Group declined a request for interview, but told Sky News all of Ian Summers' allegations about Meadow Lodge were thoroughly investigated and that not all of Mr Summers' concerns were found to be accurate. Separately, Mr Summers was dismissed for gross misconduct. Last month, the Hunter Goon Group's parent company, Four Seasons Healthcare, went into administration, but they told us a deal with creditors meant its services would remain open and it had had no bearing on the closure of services. The decision to close any of our hospitals is always extremely difficult and always the last resort and is often the result of a number of local factors. Having experienced a decline in the demand for isolated services in three rural locations, coupled with well-documented issues of qualified nurse resource availability across the sector, we concluded that these services were not sustainable, a decision made pre any administration process. All of our CAMS services are rated as good by the CQC. These allegations and historical incidents do not provide a true or accurate reflection of the high standard of care they provide every day. Health Secretary Matt Hancock and NHS England declined to be interviewed or answer our questions about child and adolescent mental health services. But in a statement, NHS England said it has opened more beds in acute units and expects private providers to offer safe, good quality care. Feed the pigeons, sit on the swings. Natasha offers hope for young people and families in the midst of mental health crises. Now at university, she's training to be an occupational therapist, using her experience of a system that took a terrible toll on her friends. I've lost 24 friends to suicide, about 24. Um, Three or four of them were in one unit, specifically. Um, it's like a whole classroom of people that I lost, to be honest. She says the key to recovery was finding a doctor willing to trust her. The doctor that had sectioned me five years previous to Hunter Coombe, I ended up being back on his unit again. He couldn't believe I was still on the same section. And I said, I just want to go home. At this point, my home had changed and my parents have relocated. And he said, OK, we'll give it a go. And he moved me. He, he took me off my section and he moved my care to where my parents live now. And I, and I, I got to go home. It was the first time anyone in all my treatment had actually listened to me and what I wanted. And he gave me that chance and he sent me home.